I'm Ted Unclay, business journalist for SBC News, and I'm joined by Colm Finlay, who is the founder of BetXS, just after appearing on the Innovation in Betting panel. Uh, Colm, how have you enjoyed the event so far? Yeah, no, it's been, it's been really good. Uh, I, I love coming to these kind of events because, to a certain degree, I get a bit of reminiscing of, of these shows I used to go to for years ago. Some of the old heads, some of the, the, the workhorses of the industry, the likes of Howard Chisholm, these guys are still going stronger, and it's good to catch up with these guys and they're, they're still kind of innovating almost along the lines of myself and we're always kind of touch base with each other, see what kind of ideas are floating around. So would you say it's quite important for uh, industry figures to attend events like this and to share ideas and things like that? I do lean on my, my father and sometimes my brothers for conversations about how the business can work. But there's nothing beats coming here to see industry leaders, people who are uh, renowned within the industry who can give me pointers. I don't come here just to spout what I think is going to be the right way forward. A lot of these people can come and give me pointers and give me a little column if you try this or do that kind of stuff. And I find these this kind of SBC hosted events are very, very good at that kind of networking and chatting and getting to know people new and old. Fantastic. So as I just said, you've just finished speaking on the innovation in betting panel about uh, changes in the retail sector. We talked about the nature of your business. Uh, would you say that sort of staffless betting shops is the future of retail betting? In my conversation upstairs, I pointed out that my initial growth targets were for small towns and villages in Ireland, where the traditional bookmaker, his management accounts were just too big, too heavy, and he had to up sticks and go back to larger urban centres. So in these kind of smaller remote towns, it is a fully automated experience. But in higher capacity shops, it might not necessarily be a completely automated experience. What I'm saying to bookmakers who are envisioning a model similar to mine is, at least just de-shackle the staff member away from the transaction. If you have a very good staff member working, say, in a Ladbrokes, you're mashing away into a keyboard, there's no real customer service there as far, as far as I'm concerned. Automation is coming, definitely. In super high capacity shops, what I've been saying to bookmakers is, at least let the transaction stand the load as being an automated machine-hosted transaction. The reasons why that works as well is because you've got no such thing as like back prices, bets are for the off, fraudulent currency payments, slow counts, these are all things synonymous with the staff counter. So obviously you've just mentioned that uh, you're starting off in uh, targeting rural towns and villages. Do you think that we could see staffless betting shops rolled out sort of across Ireland and maybe even in the UK as well? There is many towns and villages in Ireland who no longer have a bookies, despite there is still being demand for this type of transaction. There's never been a better opportunity right now to, lock, to knock on a prospective landlord's door in a small rural town or any kind of retail premise, no matter, saying, I'm here to rent your unit. Because retail, as we're all hearing in the news over and over again, is in a state of deconstruction. It's all moving online. Not betting. Betting, as far as I'm concerned, will have eternal retail demand. If I go into the banks and I'm meeting the bank manager, says, oh, bank manager, could I borrow a quarter of a million euros? He will start pouring through my current account statements. And if he sees those Paddy Power lodgements, Boyle Sports lodgements, Ladbrokes lodgements, he'll go, get out of my office. I'm not giving you a loan. And I'm going, oh, but I need to build a house. So in terms of access to kind of financial instruments, credit loans, whatever it is, people are kind of going, you know what? I prefer the anonymity of the, the retail transaction. I think there is a certain fatigue about the accessibility of mobile betting. They want to bet, but they want to keep it just one stage away from arm's reach. And I think that's what retail does. It gives, kind of gives an overlay of discipline to lads who want to have a bet. And then you've got the social knock-on effects of having a betting shop where lads can go up to their digital display and chat about whispers from the turf that day. I fancy that horse, I fancy this horse. I don't think Liverpool are going to win All that kind of stuff is then bolted onto the betting shop. But I feel that mobile betting or online betting cannot offer either. Obviously, responsible gambling and safer gambling has become quite a key topic over the past year or so. Um, could you talk us through how the procedures for age verification and um, enforcing uh, self-exclusions and the like would work in a staffless betting shop? As far as I'm concerned, there's no more powerful tool in retail betting than facial recognition cameras to be able to quickly sift through a database of self-excluded customers to say, no, you cannot access this SSBT because you are on a list. You've, self, you've requested of yourself to be self-excluded. Betting shops at this moment in time are faced with record levels of staff turnover. You come to work for me today, you're not going to go into this filing cabinet and memorize every different face. Also, us people, what we do, we tend to look at kind of a peripheral things to kind of assess 
what, how we know somebody. So talking more about age estimation here. Say if you come into my shop, Ted, and I, I might undergo a human age estimation on you right now. What I'd be looking for is you'd go, oh, that man has got good plumage. He's got good beard coverage. I think this man is over 18. But very often, as you know, you can have a 17 year old who's flying out of the walls with testosterone. He's got a hairy beard after he's like 16. You're kind of going, in a betting shop, he could be going, come in and have a bet. But what facial rec does, it looks at different things. It looks at kind of where your eyes are. It kind of sounds grim enough and you kind of become very conscious. But your face is almost like a series of tectonic plates. It moves and it droops over time. And what the facial rec does is that when you're 24, 23, 24, your eyes just start to move these small little bits. And that's what it's looking at, not the peripheral stuff that me and you look at like beard coverage, these kind of things, or kind of darkness around the eyes. The staff counter, I don't think can patrol these things anywhere near as well as facial rec can. Okay. Um, so we, again, you mentioned earlier about staffing costs and, uh, and, and, this, and uh, that area of things. Um, the last question I have for you is, would you say that these staffless shops, particularly in Ireland, are, uh, provide a good way for the retail sector to bounce back from uh, the pandemic and a lot of the costs that result from that, as well as increased energy prices. You know, you mentioned staff turnover, issues of staffing. Betting shops, it's a minimum six weeks before you can get a betting shop staff member unit you know, trained from a greenfield site that somebody with no experience to being able to be in a standalone labor unit. The reason because of that is because you got very, very complex transactions, very, very high pressure transactions. The mishandling of any one such transaction could theoretically re result in maximum payout for the company. You mishandle an ACA, you mishandle a, uh, an ambiguously written horse rent. The knock-on effects are huge. So when I say to my bookmaking colleagues around here is that de-shackle the staff members away from the transaction. Let the machines host the transactions. If you want to go at a high capacity shop, let the staff member be a quintessential customer service delivery person. And I, I think that has to be the, the way forward. And even other small aspects about it, and a very, very good staff member, uh, Ted, could grow your business by 150%. Well, is really, really nice Peter still going to be there next month? Or is Peter going to leave and is he going to be right place a really, really angry Pat? These are variables they can do. But the one thing that a staff of betting shop does, it presents itself in a consistent fashion. Knock-on effect is you're subject to an EBITDA, an earning before tax amortization depreciation multiplier, more akin to a software company. So at the end of the day, we're all businessmen here. We want our businesses to grow, be worth more money. You want to be exposed to a higher EBITDA valuer. So I say to my bookmaking colleagues, become automated. Present your business as being consistent to people who might want to buy it. Say that this transaction is hosted on machines. There's no variables in terms of staff members being on time, on time, or off time, being angry one day, be happy the next day, all these different things. And let people go off let them play music, let them play, I don't know, be chefs, do whatever stuff. But I think that the betting shop transaction really is, can be hosted by machines. The beautiful thing about a betting shop is that all of our produce comes in through the broadband overnight. There is no carriage of goods. So it's a really, really well suited business model to complete automation or various degrees of automation on the spectrum, as I described earlier on. It's been a pleasure speaking to you, Colin. Thank yeah, you so much for taking the time to speak to us. Cheers. Thank you.